Hello and welcome to another software or hardware related exercise of knowledge. Knowing a bit about Zig, Vulcan, and Wayland, I jammed all three together for this one. For the past three months, I've been working tirefully on a Wayland compositor, written from scratch. But it's not just a Wayland compositor, because it's also Minecraft. Now, before you tell me that this isn't a full implementation of Minecraft, I'm telling you that this isn't a full implementation of Minecraft. If you want Minecraft, go play Minecraft. Also, I don't plan to continue developing this into a usable compositor. So here it is. The image is blurry? Well, that's because it's currently in my imagination. The first step was to get something rendering. I copied a bunch of stuff from Minecrafty, the only difference being that instead of rendering to the terminal, I am manually creating a Wayland service in the parent compositor on which to render. So basically, it'll be a Wayland compositor within a Wayland compositor. Using this newly obtained Wayland surface, I can create a Vulkan surface using VK create Wayland surface KHR which I discovered thanks to this article. Now that I have Vulkan set up, I can render a square for each client of my Wayland compositor, then attach a texture to each square, then update each texture with the client's output every frame. But I first have to figure out how to get a client to connect to the Waycraft instead of Hyperland. I promptly discovered that I can set this environment variable, and now the client is complaining about a Wayland protocol that I haven't implemented yet, which indicates that it's using my compositor. Now, I have no experience writing Wayland compositors, so I found this implementation called SWC, Simple Wayland Compositor, which I used as a reference. Looking through the SWC source code really helped me understand the architecture of Wayland compositors. So a big thanks to Michael Forney and co. I threw together a quick and very incomplete implementation of the XDG shell protocol. Then I got it to spawn a simple child process, such as a terminal, and voila! Wait, it doesn't do anything. Now I can actually explain how a Wayland compositor works. First, a client creates a connection. The client is anything that wants to render anything on screen, such as your terminal, your browser, your status bar, or your Minecraft. The client requests a surface from the compositor. The compositor creates the surface, attaches some information to it for internal use, and returns an opaque pointer to the client. The client also requests a buffer from the compositor. The compositor creates the buffer, attaches some information to it for internal use and returns an opaque pointer to the client. The client might also request a seat for receiving input events, a top level so that the surface gets displayed as a window, and whatever else. So the client has a surface and a buffer. The client then requests a frame callback to run some sort of render method. The client renders to the buffer and requests that the compositor attach the buffer to the surface. The compositor then attaches the buffer to the surface and renders it to the screen. I implemented a bunch of core protocols such as Wayland itself and the XDG shell protocol so that clients could request top levels. Then I wrote a simple client to test what I had and it worked. So I moved on to making Minecraft. The first thing to do was turn this rectangle into a three-dimensional rectangular plane. To achieve this I need a camera transform and to achieve that I need a keyboard and mouse events. So I updated the Wayland client code to handle keyboard and mouse events from the parent compositor and added a camera transform, thus turning this rectangle into a three-dimensional rectangular plane. Then came writing the code for world generation. This is conceptually simple. You generate chunks of blocks using Perlin noise to determine the height of each column, then you generate a mesh. You could just create a cube mesh for each block, but that would be very inefficient because the user can't see most blocks. So instead, you wrap the chunk like Santa is wrapping your steam machine for Christmas. All of this took a bunch of tweaking to implement, and it needs some serious performance improvements, but there was still heaps to get done, so I moved on. It was about halfway through November, and I was getting tired of this massive and practically useless project, so I set myself a deadline for the end of the month, which I broke at the end of the month. It was around this time that I actually beat Minecraft for the first time. Here's how that went.
I wasn't quite sure how to implement infinite chunk generation. For storing the chunks, you can't use a two-dimensional array because then you're wasting a heap of space. For example, if the user explores diagonally, you can't use a list because then in order to find a chunk at a specific location, you'd have to iterate over all of the chunks to check if it's the right one. So I looked for some examples online, and when I found the answer, I felt very stupid. Just use a dictionary. And with that, the world gen was complete enough to move on. I had this super simple client that I had written, but most applications weren't working with my compositor. In fact, I couldn't find a single one that did work. So I looked at the source code for a bunch of things. I used Wayland Debug, and I tried a few different clients. In all my debugging, I added a few missing protocols, which I should have implemented anyway, and made a bit of progress. But then I started running into seg faults. Now, before you start writing a comment telling me to use Rust, I will have you know that this is a skill issue on my part, not a fault of the language. The problem was that I was performing the destroy requests from the client immediately, which caused the renderer to render a freed object, so I'll destroy things as needed after each frame. Still no clients were working though, so I looked around in waylands.xml to see what the error message meant. I at last discovered the cause. It was because I hadn't implemented part of the protocol. Yes, the file explorer was rendering. It was rendering, but I couldn't interact with it in any way, so I added a raycast method and a wire box to show which block the player is looking at. I made top levels into actual blocks and added the ability to break blocks using left click. Breaking a top level is equivalent to closing the window. Using right click on a top level enters focus mode. In focus mode, all keyboard events are passed to the top level except for escape, which lets you escape from focus mode. Now that I could interact with top level, I discovered that they didn't work. As despair began to weigh heavily on my heart, I was exploring NatPen slash Awesome Wayland for some simple applications to test with. I found this and tried it, and by sheer providence, it printed a log message that was my rescue. It literally told me what the bug was in my compositor, so I was very glad. Thank you Havoc for printing that log message. So I fixed that, and now, yes, it can run Doom. Then I made it so that you can run shell commands in the same way you would run Minecraft commands. You start by typing a forward slash, then enter the command as normal. The text is just rendered as a bunch of rectangles with different texture coordinates on this bitmap font atlas. Thanks to Frosty Freeze for making this font public domain. What a chad. I started working on physics, but couldn't be bothered. Instead, I just added gravity and a downwards raycast to prevent the player from falling through the floor. But you can still walk into blocks. Finally, I added mouse input to the top levels in focus mode. It was kinda hard to see where you were looking at, so I also added a crosshair. The code for this is the most tangled code I have ever written. It's more than just spaghetti. It's spaghetti as if it was made by a schizophrenic hobo who is drunk and dancing the hokey pokey. So if you want to take a look at it, be warned. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video.